2.5D space. All right, so we're going to start learning the viewport, primitives, and placing things within the viewport. Moving them, rotating them, scaling them. Okay? So, right now, let's just go over here and grab a primitive. I can click and drag this primitive out and hit edit. Once edit is activated, I can now rotate around this. If I hold shift, it'll snap it. So I can snap it in that direction or I can snap it in this direction, either or. Okay. Now, as soon as you unclick edit, it becomes pixels and is no longer editable. Worse yet, if I drag another one out and another one and another one and another one and another one because this is as soon as this will happen to the student, I guarantee it, I see it day one all the time. And they're truly fascinated by the fact that you can make a million rings on top of each other. But none of them are editable until I hit edit and then it's the last one that I placed on the canvas that's editable. How do I clean up the viewport? Well, up at the top, I have layer, and I can clear that layer. And there we go. Now, a great deal of times, um, the student will realize that they might have misplaced their primitive. So we're going to make a primitive that looks a little different. If you go to initialize, you have the ability to change things on each of the primitives up above. Let's say I can put radius and I can make this thinner or thicker. I can twist it, which doesn't really make sense yet, so I'm not going to do that. Um, we can cover it, which makes it half a one. I could scale it. So that's more of a point. I could twist it up a little bit. And now I could turn on polyframe. We'll give you an understanding of what this thing looks like. So you can see I twisted all the polys all the way through it. I can also twist it the other way. Other things that you can do is deform something. Okay. So now, let's say I inflate it a little bit. Okay. Squeeze it up if I wanted to. Taper it if I wanted to. So you can get a great deal of shapes just by deforming things. Okay, just keep that in mind as I go through this, the polygon primitives up here that there is a great deal of things that you could do as long as you uh, play around with this. Another thing you could do is all these are running based upon X, Y, and Z. So these little X, Y, Z dots right here, if I turn on X, it's only going to do a twist in X. that's it. So if I want to only inflate it in a certain area, like let's say X, I can inflate it just in X. Okay. The thing that you can't do with the primitives is sculpt on them. So you can see as soon as you click on them, it says you cannot do this unless you enable it to a poly mesh. Well, to make a poly mesh, all you do is have to go up here to the top. And then you can now sculpt on it. If I hold shift, I can taper this out. Now, the only thing wrong with the primitives is there is horrible topology on some of them. This one's not too bad. 
But I would argue that if I went into, let's say, the sphere that has this, make it a poly mesh, and then start sculpting in this area, it might hold for a little bit, but then it's going to run into some major topology issues if I make a lot of detail in this area. And you can see that right there. So that is why the other one exists. Because when I go into this one, and let's say I give it a lot of geometry, you notice there's no way to really end up with something weird like this. Everything sculpts, and I can totally uh, push it to its limit because there's no polar cap. And that's what you're kind of looking at is the polar cap to this one. Okay, so how do I fix all this? Well, very easy. All you do is have to go into this and go into initialize ZBrush. All right, so for every primitive out here, there is the ability to tweak it. There is an initialization state, and the initialization state allows you to play around with the overall shape of it. You cannot sculpt on it unless it's a poly mesh, and you also have deformation to play with. Based upon those three concepts right there, you can produce a great deal of shapes. So in the next video, we're going to learn how to use the shapes to produce alphas. Alright, so meet me in the next video.